Good morning. I'm Amanda Hayes, and my pronouns are she, her, and I serve as your justice coordinator. Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus. We gather on the land of the Adena, Hopewell, Wyandotte, Miami, Seneca, Erie, and Cayuga people. May this symbolic statement be accompanied by concrete acts of solidarity, healing, and reparation. And now please rise in body or spirit to join me in singing number 1014 in your teal hymnal, standing on the side of love verses one and three. We also invite you to sing a more inclusive version of the wording, we are answering the call of love. I'm Jim Conlon, and I'm happy to serve this congregation as a member of your board of trustees. My pronouns are he, him. Whether you are in person or online, we are happy you're here and want you to know that you belong. First timers are invited to stop by the welcome table out in the gallery to pick up your visitor gift. Uh, announcements, please mark your calendars for Sunday, July 2nd. Uh, the Hope for Us Conflict Transformation Team will be presenting a special Sunday service, and we will be offering a congregational engagement session afterward, where members of our staff team will be sharing their experiences of the past few years. Our former Minister of Pastoral Care, Reverend Isabel Call, will be here in person to be part of both the service and the listening session. See you there. Uh, there is a correction to the nominated announcement that was in Friday News uh, this week. Our newly elected members for nominating committee are uh, Judy Vasquez, Glenn Waring, Carla Rinto, Joan Matiscala for a term of one year. Congratulations and thank you to everyone who will be serving on our nominating committee. Uh, scan the QR code <coughs> now to check in, access the order of service, our donation page, and to submit your joys and sorrows. You can also submit pen and paper joys and sorrows at the candle table in the back corner. Today we are asking folks to let us know what pride means to you. We will share some of your thoughts as part of the caring meditation later in the service. Uh, any children who would like to help bring in the light are invited to meet uh, Gus and Nikki out in the gallery, they're waving back there, uh, as we center ourselves and listen to our prelude.
is now time for our children to bring in the light. Our chalice lighting words this morning are called Taraxicum, written by queer, non-binary, and Latinx UU minister, Reverend Teresa Soto. <clears throat> Even though they are edible, someone decided that dandelions are weeds, stragglers to destroy, to uproot. But dandelions never got the memo, never thought to care. <laughs> Busy instead with dropping roots, flinging seeds, unfurling shoots, and persistent in digging in that taproot to depths of two or three average adults end to end, the tiny yellow flower survives. You are no less resilient, reaching both down to the strength that holds you and up, up to the light, out with your beauty. And you know, having sunk your effort into the cool, damp earth, that while dandelions can be clipped and fought, uninvested in anyone's opinion, they throw their sparkling futures onto the wind, tomorrow tucked into seeds, and grow all the way back, strong and bowing at the very same time. Thank you, Ezra, for your help lighting our chalice. Good morning. I'm Amber Scott, your director of religious exploration, and my pronouns are she, they. Happy Pride, happy Father's Day, and happy Juneteenth. <clears throat> Due to the holiday weekend, there are no Sunday school classes today. Toddler care is available in room 101. Families with children are invited to take a busy bag from the gallery and explore quiet activities together in the We Worship area or Sloter Lounge. If you need a break from the service, you're always welcome to check out the board games and craft ideas in A and B or to head outside to the playground. Please put away anything you get out once you're finished. Parents and caregivers are responsible for knowing their children's whereabouts at all times and everyone attending the service is asked to please work together to moderate noise while extending grace, compassion, and understanding to one another. Today's story is called Worm Loves Worm and is one of the titles we hope to feature in our youth group's band book library. Written by J.J. Austin and illustrated by Mike Carato. Worm Loves Worm. Let's be married, Worm says to Worm. Yes, answers Worm, let's be married. Wait, says Cricket, you'll need someone to marry you. That's how it's always been done. I'll marry you. Now can we be married, asks Worm. Wait, says Beetle, you've got to have a best Beetle. Naturally, that would be me. Now can we be married, asks Worm. Wait, 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 said the bees. You need bride's bees. Can we be the bride's bees, please, please, please? <laughs> yes, says Worm. Now can we be married? You'll need to get rings to wear on your fingers, says Cricket. That's how it's always been done. But we don't have fingers, says Worm. We can wear them like belts, says Worm. 
Wonderful, says Worm. Now we can be married. Just make sure to have a band so we can dance, says Beetle. But we don't have feet to dance with, says Worm. We can just wiggle around, says Worm, like this. Fun, says Worm. Now we can be married. But you still need a white dress, a tuxedo, a top hat, lots and lots of flowers, and a cake with frosting, said the bees. But we don't have heads for hats, says Worm, or hands to hold flowers. And we only eat dirt, says Worm. <clears throat> Wait, said Spider. I can attach the hat and flowers to you with my sticky web. Thank you, say Worm and Worm. But who will eat the cake, ask the bees. I can eat the cake along with Cricket and Beetle, says Spider. What did you say? asked Cricket and Beetle. Nothing, said Spider with a smile. <laughs> now we can be married, says Worm. But which one of you is the bride, asked the bees. How can we be bride's bees if we don't know who the bride is? I can be the bride, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. But one of you has got to be the groom, or how can I be the best beetle, asks Beetle. I can be the groom, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. We can be both. Amazing, says Spider. Really? Ask Beetle and Bees. Wait, says Cricket. This isn't how it's always been done. Then we'll just change how it's done, says Worm. Yes, says Worm. And so they were married because Worm loves Worm. The end. <clears throat> in this story, Worm and Worm fall in love and explore how to get married like we've always done it. Along with their community, they learn that sometimes we need to find new ways of doing things, especially when it comes to showing and sharing love. I now invite the congregation to form a sheltering arc of love as we sing our young people back to their loved ones.
as we mentioned a little earlier in the service today, in addition to whatever joys and sorrows you might be holding, we're inviting you to reflect on what pride means to you. You are welcome to use the Joys and Sorrows form online to submit your thoughts, and there are also colorful pieces of paper available on the table in the back that you can um, submit with your Joys and Sorrows forms at the candle table. Our centering words this morning are also from Reverend Teresa Soto. Everything is still on fire, despite your best efforts. In addition to living, it is clear that fire or not, you must level up in what it means to thrive right now. That means wrestling with the truth in the fact that everything is not all your fault. I am sorry that everything is still on fire. Once hate catches, the winds of not my problem blow and the blaze is hard to stop. But hard is not impossible. Not yet is different than never. You, in community, have an answer. You have a response to systems of power and control and to the cost of suffering. You and your community together are the answer. You are not only a people of flame, but also a people of cold, clear truth. You know both where you fall short and where you flourish and where you still reach. Everything is still on fire, but all is not lost. You remain more nimble than steadfast, more unshakable than swayed by the latest rage. You are here to put out the ravenous flames and heal the world. Enough is enough. So tomorrow is Juneteenth. And on June 19th, 1865, two years after the Freedom or Emancipation Proclamation was issued, the U.S. Army arrived in Galveston, Texas to announce and enforce the proclamation in the last place in the United States where black people were still enslaved. The very next year was the first annual Jubilee Day celebration with parades, cookouts, prayer gatherings, and music. In 1968, the Reverend Ralph Abernathy called Juneteenth solidarity in the Poor People's Campaign. By 2016, 45 states had recognized Juneteenth. And two years ago, Congress passed a law to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. A Texas woman, Opal Lee, is considered the grandmother of Juneteenth. Her activism helped it become a national holiday. And she states, we can't be satisfied with having Juneteenth made into law. We've got joblessness, homelessness, healthcare, and climate change. Freedom isn't something just for black people to celebrate. I'd like to see our country celebrate freedom from Juneteenth to the 4th of July. Being free includes stable housing, health care, a job with a living wage, and addressing climate change. Structural racism, as well as hetero cis normativity and many other isms, are built into our American cultural and economic systems. And queer and trans people of color are impacted by an intersection of these systemic oppressions. The same queer and trans people who led the six days of protest in 1969 that we now call Stonewall, which is the cornerstone of many pride events in the United States. Um, in 2017, four black trans and queer community members here in Columbus, wanting to draw attention to these broader issues, decided to stop and take a knee during the Stonewall Columbus Pride Parade here. They sought just a few minutes of silence to recognize the lack of safe spaces in our city for black and brown LGBTQ QIA plus people. Instead, they were immediately arrested by city police 
And when charges were filed against them, the Stonewall Pride organizers didn't resist or protest. This led to a split in the Columbus queer community and to black, queer, and intersectional collective organizing a celebration to separ separate from the Stonewall Pride Parade. Their celebration of community pride became an annual celebration from 2018 to the present and will be celebrated in the fall this year. I wonder how we might connect with community pride as a church this year. We thought we might have a video to share from Black Queer and Intersectional Collective, or Be Quick, this morning. But understandably, Pride Month is a busy time for Be Quick, and it didn't end up working out for this service. We appreciate the work of Stonewall Pride Parade organizers have done to celebrate LGBTQIA Pride, and we grieve the break in our community. We honor the community pride organizers for stepping up to create a space that was sorely needed in our city. And we wonder what it will take for the LGBTQIA community in Columbus as a whole to center black and brown, queer and trans people so that we can all work together for true freedom. And now um, in hope and in honor of Juneteenth, please join me in singing the traditional African-American spiritual, We Shall Overcome. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kristen Harbin and my pronouns are she, her. I've been asked today to give you a reflection on pride. And so the first thing I have to say is that visibility is a hell of a thing. As a femme, that is, as the kind of cisgendered queer woman who looks most like, skirt, the way society often believes that straight women should look. I have often been invisible. I have walked by people who hated my kind, unmolested, passing like a spy, slicing like a knife through crowds that would do me harm. Karen in Potentia with my pearls and my lipstick. But I've also been passed by my people who look at me and think, other, slicing into me like a knife from crowds that I would welcome. Karen in Potentia with my pearls and my lipstick. But visibility is often so vulnerable for all my people who do not accidentally hide as well as I do, for my gender non-conforming wife my non-binary friends, my trans cousin. Every day, they face a world that looks at them with, at best, 
polite incomprehension, and at worst, visceral disgust. Karen, in actuality, with pearls and lipstick, sneering. Here and now in Columbus, we celebrate with visibility. We encourage our community to make itself visible for this, our holy month of rage, joy, grief, pride. We drape ourselves in the various combinations of the brightest colors imaginable to say, see us as we are. Our collective joy shines. Our masked presence glitters. Our visibility is a perpetual challenge to your bigotry. I honor all my brothers and sisters, my siblings who are visible, voluntarily or not, today and all days. I love you. Our visibility and our being seen, this too is holy. Hello, I am Ricky Wagoner, and my pronouns are she, her. One of my touchstone songs was written by the great theologian and reluctant rock and roll hall of famer, Todd Rundgren. It's called Change Myself from his Second Wind album. I'm not going to sing any of it because I just don't have the voice, but I will quote from it. I want to change the world. I want to make it well. How can I change the world when I can't change myself? Try again tomorrow. Trans persons as well as the rest of our community are the current low-hanging fruit to the media. Since my surgery, I've kind of had to become a consumer of that media, and I don't look at the direct sources because I don't want to give them the clicks. But I've seen enough to know that they will misdirect, beg the question, and be willfully ignorant and quote their own reliable research. Yes. <laughs> when Todd talks about conquering the Citadel in the song, he's talking about our intellectual honesty of what is really going on and what we show the world. We have to be better than the forces raised against us. They may call our pride a sin, but our pride is the antithesis of shame. We feel good and confident, not boastful. We can break barriers with our friends and allies and being the better people. If I want to change the world, if I'm sorry, if I want more peace in the world, then I must make peace with myself. If I want more trust in the world, I've got to trust more in myself. If I want more love in the world, I must show more love to myself. And if you want to listen to the song, I will play it in Beach Hall later, but <laughs> thank you all. Please rise and body your spirit and join me in singing number 118 in your gray hymnal, the African American spiritual, This Little Light of Mine, verses 1 and 3.
first off, I'm not Lauren. My name's Greg Cody. I go by he, him, he. Um, it says pride reflections. You cannot reflect on the pride today that you sit within without recognizing what that came before you. In 1924, a group of people decided that they deserved to be recognized as individuals and human beings, and the Society for Human Rights was formed. In 1950, the Matioc Society was formed in their white dresses, suits, and quiet protest on the streets with their signs, trying to be respected, gained a place at the table quietly, Fall, trying to fall into what America wanted, trying to find a crack that they could find a way in. After that, in 1955, the daughters of the Bolitis, and I know, I know I'm not saying that correctly, the lesbian organizations decided that they too deserved a place at the table. Slowly it happened. However, in 1987, well, actually, in 1969, excuse me, the first brick was thrown through the world, and Stonewall decided to take it a, a different approach. Finally, they said enough is enough. Persecution, hate, oppression, violence was not going to happen anymore. Stonewall changed the world by throwing the first brick. And personally, I would say it was probably a stiletto, but I'm not one to gossip. However, in 1987, everything that came forward was destroyed with the, with the AIDS epidemic. It gave America an, ex an excuse to dismantle all that came before, to use a disease as a way to control. However, through understanding history and what came before us, and understanding that we were no longer fighting for a place at the table, but we were fighting for our lives. That we decided ACT UP was formed. Not me, I wasn't involved. I wasn't even in town on that weekend. <laughs> However, they changed my world. I have been HIV positive for 37 years. I stand here prideful because of the people that came before me. I recognize your journey. As you sit here understanding that you sit in proud moments, whatever they may be, there was a fight that came before you. There was a group of people who decided that you were worthy enough in your moment today that they were going to put their lives on the line. Pride to me is a reflection of all that came before me. I can never hold a candle, a light, a flame to the people that came before me, but I sure can hold a candle to the people that come behind me. You too, as an individual who sits here, whatever proudful moment you have, know that there is somebody that came before you and you are the light that comes behind you. Happy Pride. Next song is We Are a Gentle Angry People, number 170. Please join and rise as you are willing and able. This is a song written by Holly Near in the wake of the Harvey Milk assassination, and it's a call to action. It demands that we make sure everyone knows who we are and how many we are. We who will not be moved, we who are scared, angry, loving, and resisting. Oh yeah, we're doing verse one and two. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm Kim Raderstorff, and I go by she and her. I'm so happy to be back here today. You know, when you get older, there, there's a term now that they give us older folks. That's trailblazers. Those are, those are the people that came out in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And, um, you know, I really wanted to speak today just to express gratitude to this congregation. Um, you know, I came out in, in around 1982, and one of the first experiences I had was to come to this, to come to a conference here um, for gay people, and it was called um, Embracing the Exile, which kind of means like you're shit out of luck, you know? Um, <laughs> But, but, you know, things have gotten a whole lot better um, in, 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 in my time, and, and I'm so grateful for that, and I'm so grateful to this congregation. Um, you know, I met, at that conference, I met Eric DeBreer, I met Bob Rice, um, and we formed a group called This Way Out. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was a way for gay people to come out. Um, there were people like Pat and Kay. Kay went on to become a, a Unitarian minister and had a church on the East Coast. Bob and Jack, and then when Jack died, Bob and Steve, Chris and Shirley. Um, Suzanne and I were married here in 1989. Frank Rivas did the ceremony over in Fellowship Hall. That was even before this was built. Um, when our two sons were born, Keith and David, they're now grown, but we dedicated them here. Um, gosh, what else did we do here? About everything. When, when they got to SYC, um, we went to, they, they were here for SYC. I taught at SYC while, the, while they were growing up. And you know, I'm, I'm really proud that, that we were able to do these things, that Suzanne and I were able to do these things together. I have to give a lot of credit to this congregation and your open-mindedness. Um, you know, you were there for me in the 1980s when no other church was. Um, and, and I truly, I just wanted to express that gratitude from the bottom of my heart. The other great thing about being older is that you get to see, it's kind of like what goes around comes around kind of thing, but you get to see the goodness that you gave out come back to you. And that's what I wish for this congregation, that the goodness that you embraced all of us in the gay community with, that it comes around and keeps coming back to you. Glad to be here today. Thank you. Hello and good morning. My name is Ivy and my pronouns are they, she. I identify as omnisexual, demisexual, demiromantic, and I 